billion people across the planet that use a that use a basic mud chulha to cook for their families. Now, the problem with this is that it releases a, a remarkable amount of toxins and pollutants into the air. It releases more than one kilogram of biomass a piece, six billion kilograms of carbon dioxide, which is three times more than what's released by private cars in the U.S. daily. So you can think about just how much pollution we are adding just by using these primitive stoves. And it's not just bad for the environment, it's bad for the women and children who congregate around these stoves. They are exposed to pollution levels that are unheard of in the developed world. And for women who actually cook around it, it's like smoking several packets of cigarettes a day. So this really is a practice that has got to get modernized. So there is a woman. Her name is Moshin Sarar. She is a Moroccan. And uh, she lives in Paducherry. And in 2007, she founded a company called Brekti with one ambition, which was to replace these mud chulas, not just in India, but anywhere else in the world, so that we can get away from these biomass uh, fuel cooking primitive stoves. Now, she's gotten some attention. She's also achieved some success where she's working in partnership with the Indian Institute of Technology. And I've even heard uh, Miss Hillary Clinton promoting the use of these across the world so that we can get off of the use of biomass um, fuels. So, uh, you know, this is something that I think people might be surprised to learn still exists in India in many of the villages and in rural areas. But the reality is there's a lot of parts of India that still haven't gotten modernized, nor in other places across the world. And you would never think of this being such a contributor to our pollution problem, uh, but it is. Well, much of the world still runs on dung. Look, look at Congress. <laughs> well, I saw a story this week in the Washington Post that is worth a mention. It's about Betsy Stanford, who turned 107 this week. She's a District of Columbia resident. And they asked her about some of the secrets to uh, her longevity, at, such as what do you eat? What do you recommend eating? What's your diet? Her response, juicy steaks, pork chops, anything you want, as much as you want, she exclaims. Everything they say not to eat, I've been eating since uh, I was 45 years old. <laughs> she was a young girl. <laughs> and, and the best part is her favorite thing that she's taken to recently is taking some Guinness Stout, mixing her nutritional supplement Ensure with it, adding a little bit of vanilla and nutmeg, and, and having that as a meal. So <laughs> congratulations to you, Betsy Stanford, for being an inspiration to us all. I'm giving up the gym, at least between now and the new year. <laughs> Well, if you thought beauty was a match for brains, it turns out, according to Psychology Today, that beauty actually does pay off. How's this for a headline? Hot men earn, on average, 5% more than less good-looking colleagues, but really, handsome men may have a hard time feeling satisfied in romantic relationships over the long haul. You know, this, this whole article is a fun one to read. If you have a chance, uh, please go out and get the magazine, because you will be entertained. Here's something else I didn't know. Stylish wardrobes boost a man's attractiveness, but only because it increases a man's cachet, not his raw handsomeness. That's why a few choice accessories, if you're a man, like the properly selected tie or the right shirt, will actually do a lot to help you have a successful evening out if you're trying to attract the opposite sex. And the article also talks about how women are generally drawn to men that are good-looking. Of course, you know, it works the same way on both sides. But the reality is the savvy woman will eventually settle for the less good-looking man because she knows he will ultimately be more attentive and be a more reliable uh, catch in the sense that he'll provide for her much more than she'll ever expect out of a man who's much better looking. So I thought the article was very interesting because normally they say that men hunt, right? But this article also proves that women are hunters. They just uh, skip over the good-looking ones and go to the maybe lesser look good-looking ones because they know ultimately that's the prime catch. So the reality is good-looking men, while they might earn more money, at the end of the day don't end up keeping their mate as often because uh, they, don't, uh, they are not able to keep the women happy. So less good-looking men out there, you might make less money, but you end up with the girl. So that's a good thing. <laughs> well, moving on. Um, we've heard about uh, 
all the controversy surrounding Four Locos that uh, was banned by the FDA. And that's the drink that was banned on a lot of college campuses because it combined caffeine and alcohol in one can in very large doses. Well, the latest craze that's hitting during the holiday season is alcohol-infused whipped cream to add to your favorite alcoholic beverage. Now, I actually like this idea. I think it's kind of cool because how many of us, you know, put that cake and that big old dollop of whipped cream on top, you know, there's rum cakes, so you add a little more to go with it. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I'm with you. I think it's a great idea, too, and I'm, uh, I'm looking around to where I can buy some. I mean, how much whipped cream can you actually consume that might actually get you a little tipsy? I mean, you'd have to eat the whole can or oh, something. Oh, people will find a way. That where there's, a, where there's something like this, people will find a way. Wait, I got it. It's perfect. I think Betsy Stanford should take this and add it to her Guinness. There you go. <laughs> And this just in, out of India, in New Delhi, a local council of northern India has banned unmarried women from carrying mobile telephones to halt a series of illicit romances between partners from different castes. This is a true story, folks. The Balian Council in Uttar Pradesh decided to act after at least 23 couples ran away and got married over the last year against their parents' wishes. And the local council was convinced that the couples plan their elopement over their cell phones. And as a result, all parents were told to ensure their unmarried daughters did not use cell phones. The boys were allowed to do so, but only under their parents' monitoring. I mean, I just, I read stories like this out of India sometimes, and I think, does this really work? I mean, it's, it's not as if people didn't run away before cell phones existed, but I guess unmarried women carrying cell phones is a real hazard in India. Well, what can I say about this? I mean, two steps forward, 20 steps back. At least the, the council in Uttar Pradesh ought to be happy that these young couples are getting married because I, I saw a recent article in the Washington Post that now up four out of ten Americans believe that marriage is obsolete. That's because it's so complicated. I mean, if you look at the divorce rates and you look at the complications around divorce and how it wipes out people financially, there's so many people who just don't want to enter into marriage uh, just thinking that if they have to get divorced, it's going to wipe them out. Well, I think even if they don't get married and they're in these long-term relationships, similar type of issues can still arise. You know, it can even be more complicated to sort it out outside of marriage as opposed